This video is based on a recently published paper in Developmental Cell by Sonia Rocha and her colleagues from the Centre for Gene Regulation and Expression based at the University of Dundee. PhD1 links cell cycle progression to oxygen sensing through hydroxylation of centrosomal protein CEP192. But what does that mean? PhD1 is an oxygen sensitive hydroxylase that had never been investigated before, converse to its other family members, PhD2 and PhD3. CEP192 is a centrosomal protein involved in mitosis, specifically centrosome maturation and spindle fibre formation. Now let's look at the cell cycle. Proper spindle formation is necessary for accurate chromosome alignment at metaphase and their following separation at anaphase. This process is highly regulated by extra and intracellular factors. Hypoxia, or low oxygen levels, is an extracellular factor that can influence the cell cycle. Hypoxia is an extracellular factor of interest in this investigation due to PhD1 being an oxygen sensitive hydroxylase. So what is the role of PhD1 in the cell cycle and how is this regulated? The best way to determine an individual factor's importance is to analyse what happens when the factor is absent. In this experiment, interfering RNA mediated gene silencing was employed to knock down PhD1. Fluorescent images show the spindle fibre formation in the presence and absence of PhD1. The top two panels with non-functional interfering RNA controls show green fluorescent spindle fibres correctly formed. The bottom two panels show spindle fibre formation in the absence of PhD1 and it can be concluded that absence of PhD1 results in improper spindle fibre formation. The mitotic index represents the ratio of cells undergoing mitosis in a total cell population. In the absence of PhD1, the majority of cells arrest in the G2M phase transition. This further outlines the importance of PhD1 in cell cycle and cell division. Because improper spindle fibre formation occurred when PhD1 was absent, it was inferred that the target for PhD1 is a centrosomal protein. PhD1 targets a specific hydroxylation motif, LXXLAP. Therefore, protein libraries were searched in order to find the most highly conserved centrosomal protein that matches this motif. The resultant protein was CEP192. Bioinformatical analysis revealed that there is an interaction between PhD1 and CEP192. However, further investigation was needed in order to determine whether they physiologically interact. An siRNA-mediated knockdown was carried out to determine what happens in the absence of CEP192. The results in the image are consistent with the previously obtained data from the PhD1 knockdown. This image shows the levels of pericentrin and gamma tubulin both of which are key components in the centrosome. In the absence of CEP192 and PhD1, a noticeable decrease in the levels of both proteins is observed. Decreased levels of both of these proteins has an impact on the correct formation of spindle fibres during mitosis. So what is the physical interaction between PhD1 and CEP192? In the absence of PhD1, CEP192 levels increase. This would indicate that PhD1 has a role in the mediation of CEP192 levels. Corresponding to previous data, mitotic cell cycle arrest occurs in response to depleted CEP192 levels. We now know PhD1 affects CEP192, but is this a direct physical interaction? The merged fluorescent picture shows this direct physical interaction taking place as the fluorescent signals of PhD1 and CEP192 overlap.
Mass spectrometry was employed to, in order to determine the exact nature of this physical interaction. SEP192, hydroxylated SEP192, and mutant SEP192 with an altered hydroxylation motif were ionized in order to acquire fragment peaks in mass spectrometry. Green represents hydroxylated SEP192, purple represents wild type SEP192, and the blue represents the mutant SEP192. The 16 Dalton mass difference between the green and purple peaks represents a hydroxylation event. On the other hand, a single peak in the ionized mutant SEP192 shows that no hydroxylation has occurred. Therefore, the data suggests that PHD1 directly hydroxylates SEP192. We will now look at the novel pathway which has been revealed by the previously outlined studies. PHD1 acts as a sensor for cell cycle progression and responds to a wide range of factors. PHD1 hydroxylates SEP192, resulting in polyubiquitylation of SEP192, leading to proteasomal degradation. Therefore, SEP192 levels are modulated. Low levels of SEP192 result in disorganized spindle formation. Under hypoxic conditions, PHD1 activity decreases. This decreases hydroxylation of SEP192, leading to decreased ubiquitination of SEP192, which in turn increases levels of SEP192. Similarly to low levels of SEP192, increased levels also lead to disorganized spindle fibers. We will now leave you with a final statement from the leading PI, Sonia Rocha, on this subject. So there are actually many questions, so for example, uh, uh, the binding of this uh, E3 ligase to SEP1 and 2, this E3 ligase usually likes to bind in, uh, phosphopeptides, uh, so uh, we found that it was hydroxylation dependent, but is it just hydroxylation or, or phosphorylation also required? Uh, we have unmapped the interaction site for between proline hydroxylase 1 and SEP1 and 2 in defined domains yet, and we don't know which phase of the cell cycle is this hydroxylation taking place, for example. And, uh, and the other question uh, that we, um, are still, uh, we still don't know is, can we use SEP1 and 2 levels as a readout of uh, PHD1 function in tumor samples, for example? You would assume if you don't have enough PHD1, uh, you would have more. Uh, SEP1 and 2 in the cell, so you would be able to use this as a diagnostic marker, for example. So this is something we hope we can address in the near future as well.